Let's set the blend mode to linear burn and boom. What's up? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name is Rens. I'm a digital artist from the Netherlands helping you create amazing photo manipulations in Affinity Photo. And after uploading my last video in which I teach you how to create the text portrait effect, which you can view right over here, you guys asked me if it was possible to create a slightly different effect, which is called the word cloud portrait effect. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create that effect. Let's roll. All right. So we've jumped into Affinity Photo and here we have the picture that I want to apply the word cloud portrait effect on. Now, the first thing that we want to do is we want to remove the background or actually extract this subject from the background. So for this, I'm going to use my selection brush tool. I'm going to press W on the keyboard to select it. And I'm simply going to make a quick selection of this guy. All right, since we're dealing with hairs, I want to refine my selection. So I'm going to go to the context toolbar and I'm going to hit refine. I'm going to increase my brush size just a little bit and I'm going to brush over the hairs so that Affinity Photo will have a closer look at selecting these. All right, now once that is done, I want to turn this selection into a layer mask or into a mask. So I'm going to go down in my refine selection dialog box. I'm going to go to output and click on the drop down menu and I'm going to select mask and then hit apply. Next thing that I want to do is I want to add a black background. So we're going to do that by using a fill layer. So I'm going to go to my menu bar. I'm going to click on layer. I'm going to click on new fill layer. And by default, it's going to fill with white, but I want to fill it with black. So I'm going to click right around here and I'm simply going to reduce the lightness to zero. So now we have our black layer. I'm going to drag this to the back and there we have our black background. Now let's call this one background. And you can see that there's quite some fringes going on and going around this hair and we can actually fix this. So let's do that right now. First, I want to save this selection. So I'm going to command click on the mask to load the mask. Once again, I'm going to go to my channels and I'm going to right click on this word pixel selection and I'm going to create a spare channel and I want to rename this one. Let's say portrait. So now we have our selection saved. Now we can actually rasterize this layer. So I'm going to deselect by pressing command D. I'm going to right click on my portrait layer and I'm going to click rasterize and trim actually. And this basically got rid of all the excess pixels around our canvas. So now we only are dealing with the subject itself or the portrait itself. Now to remove these fringes, we have to have a pixel layer, which it is now. So we can go up to our menu bar. We can go to filters. We can go to colors and then remove white mud. And boom, you can see that all these quite weird fringes are gone in one click. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to desaturate this image or in other words, I want to turn it into a black and white image. So let's go to our adjustment layers and let's click on vibrance adjustment layer. So I'm going to click and desaturate this and simply we've turned this into a black and white image. All right. Now all the preparation is done. It's time to create a word cloud. So let's go into our browser. And what I've done is I basically just Googled word cloud. So let me show you. I scrolled down a little bit and then I found this website, jasondavies.com. I clicked on it and there I have my word cloud. Now, by default, it already has a word cloud generated with some text. Now, of course, you can type in your own text. You can use lyrics from a music song. You can use the text of a speech or any kind of text. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm simply going to go with this default generated word cloud. Now, you want to change some settings and let me show you what. So what I personally like is to change the font and I changed it to Bebas. So Bebas Noe. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but this text right over here. And once you press enter, it will actually change in the word cloud as well. As you see from this word cloud, we have diagonal words. We have horizontal words. We have vertical words. And this is something I don't really like. So I'm going to change the orientation to two and I'm going to set the degrees from minus 90 to zero. And this basically just put all the words either horizontal or vertical. So let me press go so you can see it either horizontal or vertical. And that looks, in my opinion, best for this effect. Now, you see that there are many, many tiny words in between all of these bigger words. And that is something I don't really like. So I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to decrease the number of words to, let's say, 40. 
I'm going to press enter and now you can see that we got rid of all these tiny, tiny words. Pew. Hey, real quick, if you've been enjoying this video so far, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you love my content overall and you want to learn more photo manipulation, make sure to hit the subscribe button to never miss a future upload. All right, let's jump back into the tutorial. Now, once you're happy with the settings, you can download the SVG file. And of course, this file will end up in your downloads folder. So let's go to our downloads folder. Let's open it. And you can see right over here, it's called wordcloud.svg. And what you want to do is simply open it with Affinity Photo. So right click it, open with, and then click on Affinity Photo. Now I've already done this and here is my word cloud. And this is basically what it looks like. So all of these words have different colors and they have a different position. And they're all positioned on their own separate layer. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I want to make all of these words white. And there's a pretty easy trick to do this. Simply use a levels adjustment layer. So press command L and drag the white level all the way to the left. And you can see that all of these words turned white. Now, the next thing that I want to do is to put all of these words onto one single layer. So instead of one group with tons of words, in this case, 40, I want to put all of these into one layer. So how to do this, I'm going to press the keyboard shortcut command option shift E. And this basically merges all visible layers. Now, if this is difficult, you can also go to layer and simply click on merge visible. And here is the keyboard shortcut that I was talking about. And I'm not really sure what it is for Windows, actually. But simply click this one and you will have all of these things on one layer. Now, let's drag this outside of the group. Let's hide the group for now. And there you see we have all these words on one layer. And this is a thing that I'm going to use to create my word cloud portrait. So let's copy this one and let's paste it onto our portrait and let's position it right around here. Now I forgot one little thing and later it will be important. So let's clip this vibrance adjustment layer to the portrait layer. Simply do it. It's going to save you from some hassle later on. All right, now the first thing that I want to do with these words is that I want to add a drop shadow. So let me actually drag this over his face so we can see the drop shadow appearing. I'm going to go into my layer effects panel. I'm going to click on outer shadow, set the radius to two pixels, set the offset to three pixels and set the intensity to 40 percent and set the angle to 30 degrees. Now, of course, depending on your resolution, these settings might differ, but for my case, this works pretty fine. So let's cross this off for now. Let's zoom out and let's position this right around here in the corner. And what I want to do now is simply fill up the whole canvas with words. So I'm gonna use these words, maybe like so. I'm gonna press Command J. I'm gonna drag these things around and I'm gonna rotate it and maybe position it right around here. Press Command J once again and it will rotate by itself and I'm simply gonna cover up my whole canvas. So let's press Command J a couple of times and let's position these words everywhere. Now, of course you can change the size of these words as well. So simply decrease the size. Maybe when you rotate, hold shift. So they will actually rotate with increments of 15 degrees. So it's easier to keep the words either horizontal or vertical. And yeah, basically just continue until everything is covered up. All right, so this looks pretty good to me. It looks very, very messy, but it doesn't really matter for now. In the end, it's going to look amazing. Now, we have tons of separate word cloud layers and we want to group all of these together and put them onto one layer again. So I'm going to click the top one. I'm going to hold shift and select the last one. I'm going to press command G to group everything together. All right, so once we've covered up the whole face and we've grouped everything together, what we want to do is to make sure that everything is on one separate layer. So I'm going to right click on my group and I'm going to hit rasterize. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that all of these words are only inside of the face. So outside of the face, I want to mask everything out. And that is the reason why we actually saved this selection at the very beginning of this tutorial. So let's go to our channels. Let's right click on our portrait layer and load to pixel selection. Like we're going to go back to our uh, layers panel and I'm going to hit the mask icon with my pixel layer selected. And there you go. You can see that we've masked out everything outside of the face. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a displace filter so that the words actually shape to the contours of the face, let's say. 
So, first things first, I want to make a duplicate of my portrait, so I select the portrait and press Command J to duplicate this layer. Let's hide the word cloud layer for now, and I want to apply a Gaussian blur filter so that we get rid of all the fine textures. So let's go to our live filters, let's click on Gaussian blur, and let's increase the radius to let's say around 15 pixels. All right, so once that is done, we can show our word cloud layer once again. Make sure it is selected and go back to the live filters and go down a little bit to displace. Now, we want to make sure that we load the map from layers beneath. So let's click on this button. And now we can drag the slider either left or right. And you can see that the words will start shaping to the contours of the face, let's say. So. Let's go for maybe around 120 pixels. We don't want to go too crazy because then the quality of our words gets less and less. So let's go for 120 and let's cross this off. And now we can actually delete the layer that we just created. So let's click on it and let's press delete. And now what we want to do is drag our portrait layer on top of the layer stack. So let's drag it all the way up and let's set the blend mode to linear burn and now, what you see is that we get this really tiny weird white edge around our subject and this is something I don't really like. So let's double click on the displace filter and make sure that preserve all files checked. And once that is checked, you can see that the little white edge disappeared. Now, to add a background to this image, we can duplicate the word cloud layer. So let's select the word cloud layer and press command J and we can actually delete the displacement map right over here. And what we want to do is we want to invert the layer mask once again so that we have the words outside of the face and not inside of the face. So I'm going to select the layer mask and press command I. And now I select the word cloud layer and I'm going to reduce the opacity to let's say around 15%. And there we go. If you've been enjoying this video, you know what to do. And if you want to learn more portrait photo manipulation, then I highly recommend you to check out this video or this video. I'm sure you will love both. See you in one of those. Ciao, ciao.